Hello and welcome to yet another video here on the YouTube channel Spillfelling Fellowship. My name is Andreas Norwegian Viking and this is uh, the uh, Wargaming Discussion Series uh, Part 7, I think. Should be, yeah. Part 7. So, um, so we have, uh, we had our last video um, uploaded last Friday. And uh, it was um, what makes a fun game. So I, I basically talked a bit about my uh, my views uh, about what makes a fun game, what you can do to um, to have a fun sporting yet competitive um, army, uh, and, and how you can you can talk to your opponent, make it more fun for both of you. Even if one of you loses, it will still be a, a enjoyable game for the both of you. So. We had a couple of comments uh, from uh, from last week, so before we are tackling uh, today's topic, we'll go through the uh, the comments. So, um, long time commenter and friend of the show, Wharton RP says, I'll address the following parts. Army building, don't shop to friendly game with a fully optimized filth list unless you agree to have it as a practice match for an upcoming tournament. Um, IOW in our own words. Sorry, don't catch that uh, reference at all. Uh, talk ahead of time uh, when you can and plan out what kind of game you want to have. On the flip side, don't shop to a tournament designed to be a theme be it based uh, with a bunch of roses or reavers with accent. It doesn't make it look cool. Um, so I'll address the first part first. Um, if you're just going to have a friendly game, why bring filthy armies? Um, if you're going to practice, that's a whole other point. Um, because then you're both going to the game with the same kind of um, uh, tactic and enthusiasm about uh, the, the style of game you want to have. Uh, but if you if you bring a um, slightly optimized list to a friendly game that might not go as well as uh, you might think um, on the point don't shop to tournament designed to be theme based with a bunch of roses and reavers with axes tournaments are rarely designed to be theme based uh, I know of only a couple seven stones is, is highly regarded as a themey uh, tournament uh, there may also be others but um, you can theme anything, really. You can theme about everything. In in, you, you can always make up an excuse as to why these two or three armies are allied to each other. But yeah, it um, it, it takes a bit out of the, the tournament you're going to. If it's supposed to be a theme tournament um, and you're going to win with a, a non theme force, that's. Uh, that's by the by, but if you if you bring reavers along with corsairs and crossbows and uh, only corsair characters and uh, the knight of umbar instead or not on the fell beast instead of uh, the undying or whatever and uh, don't bring a shade, that is fair play. Uh, that is a completely theme force. If you go mono reavers or mono not mono reavers but mono corsairs, that will be a whole other point. Uh, so his next point is sportsmanship. Don't rules lawyer. Remember the most important rule in rule books, which is uh, rules as written to ensure everyone's having fun. Don't let rules disputes get in the way of good time. So um, I have had my fair share of arguments. Uh, for those of you who uh, have watched my interview with uh, with Dave on, uh, on the Dwellers in the Dark video. Uh, you'll know my background as a very competitive 40k player, long ways back. That is, seems to be an age ago now. Um, it's about when was that? I stopped playing 40k tournaments in 2002. Yeah, it's 15 years ago. <laughs> 15 years ago now, I completely stopped uh, playing that kind of tournament. But. Um, but yeah, uh, I use the rules against my opponents in as much of a capacity as I could, and it never meant to, um, never went away to have a friendly game or good game in, in that respect. 
so, uh, so yeah, I'll um, I'll echo this. Uh, if if you, as someone said in another part, do do offer it if you're uh, you're unsure yourself, um, and don't hesitate to to say, okay, I believe it's like this. You believe it's like this. Let's just roll the dice and carry on with the game or or bring a TO or, or um, a referee over if you feel that's necessary um, before an argument gets out of hand because I've seen that happen um, loads of times when like people are shouting each other, each other and uh, one of them is shouting referee while the other is, is trying to uh, try to convince the other guy that this is how to play so I would, uh, I would generally, the less rules bickering there is, the more friendly game is as well. Um, and his last point is also, this is a general life advice, be humble. Don't take anything personally, always uh, assume positive intent by your opponent. And if you're fuzzy on a rule, just say so. People would much rather correct you than have uh, you attempt something possibly, potentially illegal and force them to call you on it. I do this every time, uh, all the time, as I'm very forgetful. It's hard to admit you're wrong most of the time, but it's much easier when you know that by doing so, you're helping the game continue smoothly. And I totally agree with that. It, it's much better to say, you know what, I'm not sure about this. Can we check the rule be before we go any further? And uh, it will probably speed up the game more than if you um, if you um, use time on, on the rules call later. So thanks for your comment, Wolfman. Um, I'm um, I'm loving your uh, your vlogs, by the way. Uh, I think they're awesome to see your armies and especially your trees. Uh, I haven't had much time for terrain lately, but I'm, I'm feeling the terrain bug coming up. So keep up the good work, Wolfman. So uh, next up we have Nathan Van Til. Uh, I'm currently playing a friendly game with some friends uh, that I've never played. I'm finding myself uh, trying to make it fun and uh, using as many fun characters as I can, but I'm finding it difficult to do so without making uh, this, this thing huge. Uh, but I'm having a fun time planning regardless. Uh, the two of them will be playing against me with their own separate forces. That will be an interesting way to play. So you're, you're thinking a three-way? Yeah. Um, I think a good discussion will be to um, would be the best way to teach SPG to newcomers whether they are new to tabletops altogether or just new to the game. I found the scenarios in the box sets pretty useful um, in the past, uh, but what if you don't have one? Uh, or what if you uh, only have the old one that does not showcase a new concept like monsters and such? So um, I've been thinking about doing this for like a separate kind of video later on. Uh, I might not do that until we have a new rulebook. So I can use that rulebook to um, to explain the game uh, in a couple of, of fun videos. So I'll, I'll just answer this quickly. So uh, great stuff, Nathan. That you're uh, you're trying to teach others to play. That is the way that this game will evolve and, uh, and get more new players. Uh, we steadily get old players back into the fold, and I see that every day in forums and uh, and on the uh, Facebook groups that old people are returning to the game. But rarely new players um, that are investing in the game. So loads of cool stuff that you're you're trying to do here. And um, when teaching SPG to newcomers, I think the best way to go about it is to just explain the core mechanics of the rules very quickly in a fast and furious game with like four models each, like four model orcs against four Minas Tirith or like six Moria Goblins against uh, three Elves or something like that. Um, the reason for this is that you, if you include monsters or heroes at the very start, it can become very complicated, especially if you don't have any backbone to it. So I would, uh, I would just explain the core mechanics of the rules: move, shoot, fight. Um, adding in a second round, adding in weapon strikes. And after that, you get the they have the core mechanics of the game sorted, like the priority phase, 
the, uh, the way you move, the way you shoot, the way you fight, and then you can you can move on to more more aspects of the game in that regards. Then include um, include a hero um, in the game uh, for each force, and use that time to uh, explain and, and teach while you play the aspects of might, will, and fate, uh, as well as heroic actions. Because then they have the backbone of the previous um, previous games, and you can you can teach them um, the the aspects of the heroes and how that changes the game. And hopefully they will see that themselves as well, how it affects the game, how it changes the aspects of the game. And after you have done that, maybe once or twice, uh, add in heroes. Uh, no, uh, not heroes, monsters, and uh, use that time to explain to them the. Way a monster works, the multi wing creature time thing, as well as uh, the ability to do um, brutal power attacks. And um, after that, you can maybe introduce a wizard, uh, explain how magic works, and you're sorted. So, start easy, make it very fun, very fast, and very furious. That's the three keys of a good introductory game from, uh, from my many years as an employee of games which are fun fast and furious the three f's are vital to to learning a good game fast and having fun while you do it so uh, and you'll see that if you if you'll go look at bell of lost souls on youtube you can find an introductory game for the new game um spire shadow spire it's the uh, it's the arena game with um, Stormcat Eternals against uh, Bloodbound. Um, the way that game should simply start that game by quickly introducing concepts and then getting straight into it, that's the way to go. It, I thought that was a very, very nice example of how to do that. So, um, and if you don't have any starter boxes, just make yourself one. Uh, use what models you have at hand, try to make it kind of balanced, but do try to let the opponent win. Like, do try to do some fluffy cool stuff and then explain to them how a counter to this would be a good idea in what way, and so they can basically learn themselves and it's, it's reinforced more positively if they're winning the first game. Uh, you, can, you can maybe try to win the second one and give them a more run for it and if they manage to win that, fine. That uh, is perfect if they have learned something from the first game as well. So thanks for your comment Nathan. So um, next up, um, there are no more comments, uh, kind of comment shy this week so I hope more of you watching uh, are commenting uh, on this video because we are tackling a new subject which is um, which is how to survive a tournament. So it's no secret that I'll be uh, be dragging along my Norwegian compatriot Steve to Desolation of Stockport in uh, one week. So we'll leave uh, we'll leave on on Thursday morning. Uh, have some shenanigans with James, uh, and then we'll be available um, most of Friday. Just I plan to just eat breakfast and then set up shop at uh, Element Games and uh, have some Guild Ball games and. Um, and uh, SPG games against Stieg until people are showing up and it seems that loads of people are not going to show up about noonish um, or mid-afternoon so more and more people will join and we'll, uh, we'll eventually go have a curry or something and then um, and then we're ready for the Saturday but we're not talking about the prep for the tournament in, in that regard that we're just going to have fun and play games on the Friday. We're talking about how to actually survive a tournament and how preparation is key. So I'm generally known to um, attend tournaments with a few goals in mind. So I'm just going to have a drink. So. If I'm going to a tournament, I'll, I'll first analyze what kind of tournament is it. So, Desolation of Thoughtbot is a 100-point um, GBHL event. I can at maximum attend like two or three, uh, two or three events for the GBHL a year. So, I'm not competing in the league, obviously. Uh, but uh, there is. Um, 
there is other reasons to go and that's to meet wonderful people and that's to have fun and play great games but I usually use tournaments as a way to paint an army I rarely would have painted otherwise. So to give an example for that, for Articon, uh, which is a competitive tournament, I chose my army to be in the running to win. Uh, I, I did great the first, first three games and I was at table one for game two, three and four until I met Devin with uh, a very similar army to myself and then I, I bumped into Jay, uh, Claire in, in, in Lord's Battle and I bumped a few tables and I won last game um, which is which is kind of cool um, so I, I got myself up a few standings so I finished like 20 something I believe um, and um, but it was an enjoyable experience uh, nonetheless and I, I had extreme fun but that was a tournament I intended to win so I've never never really considered hobbits uh, earlier I've, I've been spending loads of time painting evil armies for the grand campaign so I wanted to break up my my evil ways and, and paint a good army for once so it gave me the possibility to paint up Galadriel so I painted up uh, two versions of Galadriel I painted up Alfred uh, and I painted up an entire shy army 72 um, hobbits, all the heroes, mounted heroes, dismounts for the mounted heroes, everything that is available to the Shire Army. Uh, only thing I painted up for that earlier was Bandabras for the Grand Campaign, which none of the other players had Bandabras, so I had to paint them, uh, paint them up for that. So for for Articon, I, I immediately recognised that this is a competitive tournament I designed a competitive army to play in the tournament and I painted that army up in about one and a half months up to that tournament so that's stage one find out what you want to do and how you're going to achieve that with what kind of army so for Desolation Stockport which is happening in one week I'll be bringing a very non-competitive very themey very fluffy Dunlending army so uh, you can watch my first practice game with those against Stieg uh, over on our Patreon um, Patreon page. Uh, it's only for patrons to watch. So if you want to watch that, do do uh, include yourself in our wonderful group of patrons for as low as one dollar a month, and you can see that practice video. But it is basically Thrid and Wolfsbane, foot mounted, um, Saruman, which is my general, of course, um, foot mounted. We have Grima, uh, foot mounted. We have a Dunlending captain. Uh, we have 16 Dunlending warriors with shields, one with a banner, 10 with bows, 6 with two hand weapons, 2 bat swarms, which I'll be using um, kind of crow miniatures like ravens. Uh, so for the Crabane of, of Dunland uh, and eight wargs and the reason I have eight fell wargs in there is to that's the best way to shoehorn in um, two bat swamps without having in a goblin captain or the like so uh, so I, I found that game very cool it might win a few games but I don't think it will be viable to win the tournament so I'm, I'm primarily going there to meet up with wonderful people I most often speak to via the camera <laughs> or um, or on Facebook groups or in forums so I'm going to meet up with a bunch of wonderful people and the main reason I'm there is to have a good time and have fun um, so, so that's that's the main goal and I've designed the army and I've, I've started painting it and I'm nearly done I'm, I'm in my final touches on painting horses which people who know me uh, will know about I'm so these three horses, it's um, it's uh, Saruman, Grima and Thryden mounted, that is left in my army which I have to paint and then it's onto bases, but I do want to finish my other last 12 wargs as well for this. So that was the first part. So in, in preparation um, I would say make yourself a schedule and find out what you want to achieve in what time. 
So I plan to use them about a month on my gun learnings. So I planned ahead for that, um, allocated time and, um, and spent that time to, to paint the models. Uh, and, uh, and it's gone quite well, I'm, I'm on target. I even painted eight Saruman models when I could have painted two, and uh, I even painted three Grima models when I could have painted two. So um, that's, and I painted extra, I painted like eight extra uh, guys with uh, with shields, one extra captain, one extra banner, and uh, six extra guys with uh, with two hand weapons and two extra guys with bows. So I've, I painted up my entire gun learning force, every gun learning I will probably ever need unless there are cavalry coming at some point. Uh, I hope, I hope. So I have written down in my wonderful painting guidebook uh, the colour scheme I was using for my gun learning so I can go back and paint more stuff for that army if ever more models are needed. Um, next up is to, um, well, preview, prior to that you should re read the rules back, uh, see what kind of scenarios they're using, if they're using special kinds of scenarios so first thing I saw is that they're using the old scenarios from the um, from the main rulebook instead of the new GT ones and that's of course because the ticket sales for uh, Desolation Stockport started before um, before the rules pack of the scenarios for GT was, was released and as such since they already sold tickets they can't really go back and play other scenarios and I, I totally respect that, and uh, we will be playing with the old ones, although I prefer the new ones myself. But I can see uh, a few of the scenarios are a bit wonky, so they probably will have to be fixed at some point. But it's a, it's a flowing thing, it doesn't happen all overnight. Um, next up is to plan your um, how you get there and how you are going to sleep because sleep is important <laughs> so um, obviously for me I'm a Norwegian so I have to fly um, I'm flying Scandinavian Airlines and Norwegian uh, to get there and uh, we're staying at the uh, the Premier Inn just uh, over the road from Element Games so it will be easy for us to to get to the venue early in the morning and um, get to bed um, when we need to uh, without much hassle but do plan to, to where you're going to stay and uh, and how you're going to get to the tournament. Um, if you if you are on low budget, I would recommend uh, bunking up with somebody. Um, me and Steve will be sharing a room. Um, and uh, also, if you're if you're traveling by car, uh, do carpool because that is more cost effective than driving by yourself. Um, and as I guy who cares a bit about the environment I would recommend uh, uh, public transportation wherever possible of course so, so that's the uh, the way to get there next up is uh, is how you plan uh, ahead for for the actual tournament being at element games gives destination stockboard a kind of an advantage because they sell stuff at the venue uh, they sell drinks they can order food I have heard um, and of course they have a big 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 shop where you can buy super glue, dice and everything uh, you need there. But I have like a, a system, um, I, I usually print out the rules pack, uh, read through the rules pack, uh, again not at, on the computer but in a physical format I find that more, more of a good way to absorb the information within the rules pack. I read up on the scenarios because I can't remember stuff for nothing. So I, I usually read up the rules pack and the scenarios again to give myself a bit of a bit of a go ahead so I don't have to like, oh what's the next scenario? Okay. Read on that. Okay, what's the next scenario for the next game? Okay, read on that. I, I'm I'm prepared. And since the scenarios are coming random, uh, I guess there's no schedule for which scenario is which in the uh, in the games uh, I, I it's better to be prepared as well um, print out at least three armor lists uh, and they should be 
an ominous that could be read by a person that doesn't know what armor use and instantly recognize it and be able to check it. I personally use Army Builder for my army lists. Uh, there are other options available like the free Lonely Knight Army Builder uh, Excel sheet. And there's also loads of other options. Uh, Baffled Scribe by here is, is coming along with a uh, Lord Rings Hobbit mod for it. So you, you might use that as well. I, I've never tried it so I don't know. But, but yeah, do print out several army lists. Uh, the reason for this is uh, you'll probably hand one into the TO to be checked and don't expect it, you to get it back. I saw dozens of people at Articon uh, trying to get their arm lists back from the TO before they were done checking them because uh, they haven't had only one printed out uh, and try to avoid handwritten arm lists because not everyone um, writes beautifully. Uh, I write like a doctor so so that's well, that's one of the reasons. So print out a couple of armalists. Uh, make sure you have one for your opponent to, to read through. Uh, you can read yours, or you can you can uh, you can have an uh, extra one. But I I usually since I'm I'm playing with magic at this point, and I, I like to mark out my my hero uh, might will and fate uh, points. I like to print out one armalist. Uh, for each game I'm having, plus one for the TO, and an extra one just to be sure. So I'll be printing out eight copies of my list. Luckily, it's only one double-sided page. <laughs> um, fun thing about Arm Builder is also a quick reference sheet, so you have all the rules you need um, for the game. Bring a rulebook, uh, the source books you are using, and all FAQs you think you would need. So the main main book FAQ as well as the FAQ for the army you, you are using yourself. You can of course uh, print out all the FAQs to be certain of, of your opponent's things as well uh, but I, I usually trust people to bring up themselves. Um, TOs usually have FAQs on, on hand so if you need to read an FAQ they probably have that available as well. So um, next up is what to bring besides your army. So remember to bring your army. I have seen people forget their armies either on their way to the tournament or um, and in tra public transportation and stuff like that or just forget it at home. Um, so do remember to bring your army but also remember to bring the things you need. Uh, measuring tape, dice, uh, any widgets you want, might need, um, if you're bringing Bolg, um, have a kill tracker of some sort. I usually use like uh, magic uh, crystal counter things for that, but other options are available as well. And uh, and do um, do bring glue. I find bringing glue to a tournament will make you the most attractive person in the room, uh, as well as it prevents you from from having to go bother other people with having to, to uh, borrow glue off them if one of your models break during um, the tournament, which it is prone to do. Um, bring a display board or a tray. This is, is very key because we will be playing on um, 72 by 48 inches board but we will be using 48 by 48 so it's, it's fairly simple to have a tray beside the table and you can put the models that die onto the tray and then you'll be ready for the next game just transport your tray to the next table and then do the same <coughs> I've seen people balancing fell beast armies on top of figure cases figure cases go on the ground and suddenly have a fell beast in a thousand pieces nobody wants that but if you if you're able to make a themed like display board thing I will not have the time to do that for my army sadly, I did last year, but um, but uh, that is wonderful and will probably garner you some oohs and ahs from, from people uh, if it's done really cool and really nicely. <coughs> Alright, so that's, that's the main essentials like glue, dice, um, something to write with and on, a notepad or something. 
um, um, which are very cool books and stuff like that. Uh, so bring all that. Uh, next up, you would need to um, to bring something to keep your blood sugar level uh, fairly straight. So eat a good hearty breakfast. And I know that tournaments are like there's partying going on on the evenings and uh, and stuff like that. So there's no better cure for a hangover or or whatever. Uh, drink responsibly. Um, in in like a good fatty food breakfast and that's what I love about Britain <laughs> you do that so well um, so the breakfast at Beefy Trim is, is was a life set for me last year I don't think I stayed up until like four half past four in the morning or something on the Saturday and then four hours later I was eating breakfast at Beefy Eater feeling very fresh managed to finish like 14th or something in the tournament uh, and having that slow re release energy uh, fat stored and uh, just breaking that food down during the day is, is very beneficial buy some bananas slow release energy um, is, is good have some flapjacks uh, some nuts some chocolate at hand that's always good and plan for lunch if the tournament doesn't provide lunch plan ahead for lunch don't expect to have the time as much time as you might want for lunch um, so plan ahead for that um, so yeah that's that's what you need to bring and also if the venue doesn't sell it bring um, drinks yourself like water is good to have uh, but also like soft drinks and stuff uh, is also good to good to go uh, but I do think element games provides that um, they have a, a bar which is open so you can get tea coffee um, water soft drinks whatever you need at the bar there so, so yeah um, other things uh, how to survive um, be friendly I, I think I've talked a bit about that the last video but do behave yourself um, when playing a tournament um, banter is always good but don't um, don't behave like a total maniac and uh, as a lot it might give you uh, a bad reputation and, um, and yeah I, I watched the last video and I think I've, I've talked very much about how to how to have a good game also in a competitive tournament setting um, be friendly um, that's something I didn't talk about uh, but be friendly to new faces take interest in their hobby talk to new people don't be afraid to socialize to mingle um, I try whenever I can to to talk to new people about their hobby and their stuff and it's it's always good to get to know new people and have that extra connection uh, at the end of a tournament maybe you'll meet a person that you didn't think was local to your area but is um, maybe you'll make new friend uh, contact whatever it's always good to have in, in this kind of uh, kind of um, hobby and also this kind of world um, it, it's it's invaluable to to make friends and acquaintances across all nations and borders uh, for anything really so why not take the opportunity to get to know new people as well so, uh, so I could probably ramble on uh, for hours and hours and hours about tournament experiences and stuff like that but um, but yeah um, that's my survival tips for a tournament um, don't yeah well drink responsibly and get yourself to bed I know some people uh, that are better on no sleep or some sleep my <laughs> minute amount of sleep but I, I don't think that applies to everyone and so try to get yourself a decent amount of sleep you could probably sleep after the tournament but some sleep is very good uh, and uh, eat healthy uh, or or eat big breakfast big breakfasts are good for that um, stay away from McDonald's for breakfast don't recommend that 
you'll be sitting on the toilet more than, than you'll be, uh, be playing the game. That's not always good. So, so yeah, uh, that's, that's my tips to survive. I uh, hope I'll see a lot of you at uh, Desolation Stockport. And uh, this is me signing off. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to have a video for you next week. If I do, it will be filmed on the Wednesday. Uh, so, um, so head over to the comment section well before that, uh, before Wednesday evening and uh, give your comments so that I can include that in the comment review for the next episode. Give us your, uh, your thoughts and uh, suggestions on how to survive the tournament and it will still be published in time for Stockport. And, um, and yeah, um, as always, please comment, like, share and subscribe. Do check out our Patreon uh, to support us in our endeavours, and as always, support your hobby.